brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
Dear brothers and sisters, as we are before the Lord, who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Father, you know my needs and you feel my pain, trials and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with our guided contemplation of the Gospels. To familiarize with the Gospel text for our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verses 12 to 17, in which Jesus proclaims, What I command you is to love one another. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
I shall not call you servants any more, because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. You did not choose me, no, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the gospel that we just heard proclaimed. To help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's word and also to prepare our hearts for our guided contemplation prayer. In today's gospel, Jesus not only asks that we love your neighbor as you love yourself, as in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 31. But in this Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus' commandment is more radical when he proclaimed, This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. My sisters and brothers in Christ, we know that when we love ourselves, it is not always the most ideal form of love. We can love ourselves selfishly at the expense of others. For example, a priest can turn down a request by someone in need of confession or who is sick in the hospital and tells the person, I'm not free, when in fact he is unwilling to serve because he is about to go for a movie or it is his off day or he's feeling tired and the like. While we can justify that we as a human person have our own needs and rightly deserve our off days and the like, yet the love that Jesus proclaims when he holds himself as the model of how you and I are to love others is a sacrificial love that is totally selfless. When Jesus loves us, his love is total and unconditional. He willingly and freely accepted to suffer persecution publicly and cruelly and be condemned to death for proclaiming the truth of the gospel, that he is the Saviour and Lord. Jesus' love for us and all of humanity is an infinite divine mercy that is totally consumed by his Father's will to save all of humanity from our sins. The sins that are threatening to destroy ourselves and the world that God has created so perfectly and beautifully. And so in today's Gospel, when Jesus asked his disciples and us to love our neighbour as he has loved us, Jesus is inviting us to go beyond the normal ways of loving. Jesus is inviting you and I to love in such a manner that we are willing to make all the needed sacrifices for the good of others and most of all, for the sake of the growth of a person's faith, hope and love for God. Such sacrificial form of love need not always necessarily be explaining to people about God and our Catholic faith, but more importantly, in the genuine witness of our faith through the quality of our daily living and during the times of great challenges and trials in our lives. Jesus also explained further what his love meant when he said, you did not choose me. No, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. In saying this, Jesus is giving you and I a mission in life. To draw more people to him and his father. 
this will take different forms of challenges for different people. However, regardless of what this mission may be, you and I have the responsibility to try to discern more fully and more authentically what it is and how God is wanting us to live this lifetime mission of witnessing to the gospel of salvation that he has proclaimed. And if we are genuinely sincere about this, Jesus says, I quote, then my father will give you anything you ask him in my name. My brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation proper, I urge you to switch off your mobile phone and set up a conducive ambience for your prayer. Please also note that as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find what I say to be helpful to your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in some personal way that is different from mine, then simply ignore what I'm saying. Please note too that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation. They are to give you the sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. And if you wish to have more details of the structure of this guided gospel contemplation, and also to listen to the introduction of this series, please click on to the link at the bottom of this video. And so, my sisters and brothers in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. Let us begin by composing ourselves. Please switch off your mobile phones, close your eyes, sit upright, and focus your attention on your nostrils. Become aware of your breathing the air that is entering your nostrils and giving you life. Every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life. For as soon as we stop breathing, we will die. God is present within your heart and is loving you personally and intimately. So thank the Lord. Prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we pray that during this contemplation, you would give us the grace to have the courage to love as selflessly as your Son has loved us. Send us your Holy Spirit to give us your light, your love, 
and your mercy to be more like your Son. Imagine yourself at the scene where you are with Jesus and his disciples. You have all just arrived back from an afternoon walk and from a quiet morning of quiet contemplation. As you all arrive home and are preparing to do some house chores, Jesus calls every one of you and says, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. And I call you friends. You and the disciples immediately keep some moments of silence to ponder on what Jesus has just said. As you are all aware that this is a very important commandment. Upon further reflection, you begin to realize that to love as Jesus loves is a very radical and selfless love that is beyond your human capacity. This is because you humbly realize and admit that our weaknesses and selfish ways and self-centered attitudes are often the main obstacles that are preventing us from loving Jesus as much as we wish.
As you ponder on your life, you feel disappointed and sad that you have failed to love Jesus as you ought to. you sense that the other disciples are also feeling similar guilt as you. As Jesus knows the challenges of living up to such a radical love that he is inviting all of you to embrace, he says to all of you, My friends, you do not have to be perfect in the way you love me and my Father. We know the great temptations and trials of loving in the sacrificial way that I ask of you. You are consoled at Jesus' mercy and unconditional love for you and all the disciples. In fact, this is often what he preaches to the crowd. Jesus then adds, You did not choose me, no, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. You feel honored of being chosen to be one of his disciples, whom he trusts and to whom he shares the fullness of the truth of his Father's will to save all peoples.
in the silence of everyone, Jesus says, And then the Father will give you anything you ask Him in my name. This sounds too good to be true. But as you reflect on your experiences of living the faith, you realize that God our Father has never failed you. And you thank the Lord for all the blessings you have received in your own words to Him. Become conscious that you are in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that soon after our contemplative prayer, we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review only needs to take some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during the prayer. Get in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and describe your experiences. As such, click the pause button now, close your eyes and spend the next few minutes making a review of your contemplation prayer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer. I would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, then please click the button below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you would soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. Take one patient step at a time and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experiences of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. We shall now move on to the next part of our session, which is the benediction.
You have given them bread from heaven. Heaven in itself delight. Let us pray. O God, in this blessed sacrament, send us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in session 15 of Living a More Discerning Life series. It is appropriate that we briefly recap what we have done thus far. You would remember that we started this series by admitting that to live a more discerning life is a complex topic to wrestle with. Yet, it is, if this series is going to provide us with some good and helpful insights of how you and I can live a more wholesome life and make a positive difference to our family, the people with whom we work with and relate to, and develop a more inclusive and respectful perception and care and compassion for those who are suffering in the world, and most importantly, if you and I can take little steps towards getting to know God, our Father, and loving Jesus as our Lord and Savior more personally, through the inspiration and light and power of the Holy Spirit, then to have been engaged in this journey would have been worthwhile and being a providential gift that God has given to you and to me and our church. We began with asking ourselves the very basic human question that everyone in the world asks, but most do not spend time to reflect on, as one's pace of life is so hectic and filled with activities that one often do not give enough time to ourselves to reflect on. The deeper and more important questions of our lives. Here are some of the questions we ask. Am I a happy person? Do I live a meaningful and fulfilling life? 
Are my daily experiences of my life one that is filled with pains, trials and helplessness? Do I manage well my challenges in my relationships with my family, relatives and friends and at work? What about the other many challenges that I am facing like habits, behavior, moral living and addiction and the like in my life? What about the goodness and values that I have and see in myself that long to grow in and bear fruit? My sisters and brothers in Christ, in the last 14 sessions, we reflected on three key aspects of our lives as a way of discovering how you and I could live a more discerning life. For this, we first reflected on the aspect of self, which is our identity, and concluded that unless our discernment series is founded on first clarifying the question, who am I? Which reminds us that every human person is a precious child of God as the foundational basis for our reflection our discernment series would otherwise not be focused. We then reflected on who is God and reflected on some very foundational attributes of God, like He is our Creator and we are His creatures, His sons and daughters, whom He loves with mercy, whom He never fails, and whom He desires that we live with him for all eternity in heaven. Thirdly, to situate our reflection of the aspects of the self and God in the concrete reality of our daily living, the inseparable reality that we need to reflect on is the aspect of the secular world and how whether we like it or not, is the reality that influences our thinking and persuades us to live a certain lifestyle. We then, on our last three sessions, reflected on the themes of eternal life and the reality of death, and how the secular world continues to influence and affect our faith as in the true stories of Matthew that we have shared. My sisters and brothers in Christ, it seems to me that as we have reflected on the three key aspects of living a more discerning life, it may be helpful that we next move on to reflect on the two key questions that I believe will be helpful for you and for me. And these are first, how do I see and understand myself? And secondly, how does God see and understand me? These two questions may seem non-intrusive or non-threatening or non-challenging. However, if you and I were to delve more deeply into the question, I believe we will uncover and unveil much of what we may have presumed we know as correct about ourselves, when in fact, what we claim or presume to know is only the tip of the iceberg or perhaps a distorted version of what we think we are. When the truth of who we are and what we are experiencing can only be discovered more clearly when we come to know the second related and inseparable question of how does God see me and understand me? Let us very quickly take the example of the parable of the prodigal son in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. 
We all know the story so well, so I will not need to repeat the details here. In the parable, we know that the younger son asked for his share of the father's property. His father, who symbolized God our Father, with much sadness respected his son's insistence, demand, and gave him what he asked for. Even though he knew that in all probability he would squander it away in his foolish and immoral living. Nevertheless, as the son was insistent that he was doing the right thing and that he desires of what life is about, is good for him and what he wanted has to be right when in fact we all know that he was making the wrong decisions in his life and had to learn from his painful mistakes when a famine broke out and when he had squandered his, all his wealth as his father had expected. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in this parable, we see that the younger son had a narrow view of himself and a distorted view of what living a meaningful and fulfilling and happy life is about. We could say that he was blinded by the influences of the secular world that promised him a fulfilling and happy life when in fact it was a fantasy that emptied him of what life is truly about. So let us begin with asking ourselves, how do I see myself? Do I like what I see in myself? One good way to begin this reflection is actually for us to spend some moments reflecting on the present situation of our life and ask ourselves the different questions we need to ask to bring to a greater awareness of how we as a person is living our daily lives. For some of us, we may be having many concerns and worries in our lives. This could be the financial needs of our family as we may likely lose our job during this COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. For others, our concern may be our poor health. Still for others, it could be the worries of our children who are losing their faith as they have stopped going to church even before the suspension of masses. And still many others, our pains and trials are our relationship with our spouse and children who are facing much tension and the quarrels and arguments are getting more frequent and alike. Whatever we may be facing in our present life, may I first invite you to spend some moments today or the coming days to get in touch with your inner feelings. Second, try to write down and describe your inner feelings, for example, I'm at present feeling very confused, angry, helpless, upset with myself, my family, and my boss at work and the like. I don't feel like praying as I don't feel God's presence in my present needs. Then, note down these inner feelings in your spiritual diary as we have mentioned before. Third, try to bring your inner feelings to God. In your prayers and contemplation, and then ask God, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to open my mind to your truth of what is happening to my present life. My sisters and brothers in Christ, this exercise may appear to be simple, 
But what is important is that this exercise is first providing you with an opportunity to calm down and compose yourself and not allow your emotions to dominate and overpower your present daily living. That is, if you are going through a lot of emotional pain in your present life. Second, when you begin to get in touch with your inner feelings, you are then becoming more aware of what is happening within you. This is important because if you keep repressing and suppressing your emotions, these inner feelings would one day explode, so to speak, and would in all probability become more difficult to deal with. Third, you are bringing your present concerns to God and not simply lock your views of what you think about yourself and about life within your own narrow and even distorted views. God, through the Holy Spirit, may shed some light on what is happening to your life. That is assuming you are open to seeing and listening to her promptings and inspirations. As these questions need time for you to set aside, outside this session, I think it would be good that we end this session here. And if you did not catch the pointers that I highlighted earlier, you may rewind this video and note down the questions and steps of what you are to do. You can also repeat this exercise even every other day and then gauge and observe the inner feelings and the directions they are taking. Even as we continue with the later future sessions of this discernment series. The more often you are able to do this with an open heart and mind to God's love and forgiving and healing graces as we prayed at the beginning of this session before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, the greater opportunities you are giving yourself to living a more discerning life in the Lord. Thank you for your attention and participation. And we look forward to having you in our next session. Heavenly Father, as we come before your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is physically and truly present to us in this blessed sacrament, we ask you to continue to give us the wisdom, the light, the love, to desire to transcend all our challenges and pains and trials of life, to live your will, so that we can finally live with you for all eternity after our life on earth comes to an end. So we pray that you give us the graces and the light and love to live your will with greater generosity of heart as we pray. And so we pray, Lord, Lord teach, teach me, me to, to be, be generous. generous. Teach, teach me, me to serve, serve you as you deserve. deserve. To, to give, give and, and not, not to count the cost. To fight and not and to not heed to the, wounds. the wounds. To toil, to toil and, and not to seek for rest. For rest. To, labor to labor and, and not, not to seek for reward. reward. Save, Save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen.